Hello students, today we are discussing a very significant concept in the issue of abnormal behavior. This significant concept is about personality disorders, especially about odd or eccentric behavior. Before we understand what is the concept of personality disorder, let us try to understand the definition of personality. Personality refers to a distinctive set of traits behavior styles and patterns that make up our character or individuality. Different people have different personalities, but in no way these different personalities affect us or affect themselves. It is quite natural that different people have different personalities, but under certain situations, under certain conditions, some people exhibit different symptoms or different characteristics which may be distressing to themselves and also to others. Under these situations, the concept of personality disorders arise. Suppose if we have to define what are the personality disorders, we can say personality disorders are a group of psychiatric conditions characterized by experience and behavior patterns which cause serious problems with regard to at least two conditions like thinking, mood, personal relations and control of impulses. Like at least two of these factors, whether it is your thinking pattern or whether it is the mood or whether it is the interpersonal relationships or whether it is the control of impulses. If any two of these factors are strongly impaired, naturally we can consider them as personality disorders. People with personality disorders generally have problems in personal development and also in the development of the character. These problems generally arise during adolescence and then in their adulthood these things come to the peak, that is these disorders enhance when they are in the adulthood and especially with children and adolescents these personality people with these personality disorders they have great difficulty in dealing with others that is their interpersonal relationships strongly impact others and their relations with the others irrespective of the personality disorder people with these personality disorders tend to be very inflexible in their behavior, very rigid in their thought process and also in their behavior and give very inappropriate response in their dealing with the others, that is in dealing with the demands and the changes of the life. People with personality disorders have a very narrow view of the world and it is very difficult for them to expect any kind of an effective participation in social activities. Now let us consider what are the different types of personality disorders. Generally these personality disorders can be categorized under three clusters. Cluster A which includes disorders characterized by odd or eccentric behavior Cluster B which includes disorders marked by dramatic, emotional or erratic behavior and cluster C which includes disorders accompanied by anxious and fearful behaviors. Now let us focus only on cluster A personality disorders. These cluster A personality disorders are comprised of three types. One is schizoid personality disorder, second is paranoid personality disorder and third is schizotypal personality disorder. We will be seeing the characteristics of all these disorders and then we will discuss about the causes and the treatment approaches to deal with these disorders. Coming to the first one schizoid personality disorder. When I say certain characteristics related to this disorder, you will be knowing how a person with this kind of a disorder shows certain patterns and 
If you come across any such person who is having this disorder, you can identify based upon the symptoms that this person is exhibiting schizoid personality disorder. Now, let us see what are the characteristics of this schizoid personality disorder. I think you might have seen some introvert people who are generally withdrawn, who, who do not interact with the others. That is quite a normal pattern. But what happens in this schizoid personality disorder is, schizoid personalities are extremely introvert, withdrawn, solitary, very emotionally cold and distant. They don't want to interact with others and they want to maintain distance. They are often absorbed with their own thoughts and feelings. That is, they are preoccupied in their own feelings and thoughts. They fear closeness and any intimacy with others. Because of this fear, they don't want to maintain any interaction with others even if it is a normal friendship. And people suffering from schizoid personality tend to be more daydreamers rather than actually practicing in the daily life. That is, they often live in a world of their own. So, when you look at these characteristics, they are more of an introvert. But introverts are generally a basic pattern of their personality. But schizoid personality disorder people have more of the extreme type of introvertness and also a tendency to move away from the people. So, these are the characteristics of schizoid personality disorder. Coming to paranoid personality disorder, a second category of odd or eccentric behaviors. I think when you say paranoid, the most important aspect that, come, that, that comes to your mind is they are very highly suspicious. They are highly suspicious about the other people. So, these paranoid personalities interpret actions of others as very threatening or demeaning. They, are, they, fe they fear to talk to the others because they feel that uh, they cannot believe them. They cannot believe what others are saying to them. So, naturally they, they have that kind of a threat to believe in the others. People with paranoid personality disorder or untrusting, unforgiving and often resort to angry or aggressive outbursts. That is, generally they become very aggressive when they talk to the others or even when they have to listen to the others without any justification. The main reason is they see others as unfaithful, disloyal or dishonest. Paranoid personalities are often jealous, secretive and they also appear to be emotionally cold or excessively serious. Because of these tendencies, they do not want to interact with others. And even when they are interacting, they become very hostile in dealing with the others. This is the reason why they fail in social relationships, that is social interactions, and then they feel that they are not fit to interact with the other people. And again, they want to maintain the distance. It is like a vicious circle of behaving with a hostility and then confirming themselves that they cannot maintain good interpersonal relationships. Now, the third category is schizotypal personality disorder. These schizotypal personalities tend to have odd or eccentric manners of speaking or dressing. They often have strange, outlandish or paranoid beliefs and thoughts. People with schizotypal personality disorder have difficulties bonding with others and experience extreme anxiety in social situations. Sometimes in their social interactions, they react inappropriately or do not react at all during a conversation or they may talk to themselves. And even when they are talking, they want to be the center of attention and try to dominate the conversation. So, this naturally irritates the others. They also have delusions characterized by magical thinking. For example, they say that they can foretell the future or read other people's minds, which is not possible in the practical reality. So, these are the characteristics exhibited by 
schizotypal personality disorders. Though there are different symptoms for each category of personality disorder, irrespective of the personality disorder, we can say like most of the personality disorders have some common symptoms. For instance, we can just look at the symptoms of any sort of a personality disorder that is self-centeredness that manifests itself through a me first self preoccupied attitude that is complete self-centeredness that I have to be the first, I have to be the center of attention, I should be given the proper attention. This kind of a feature is very much common in any sort of a personality disorder. Second symptom is lack of individual accountability that results in a victim mentality and blaming others for their problems. What happens here is like I do not want to take any responsibility, I do not want to be accountable to others and I always project myself as a victim rather and also blame others for my own situations, for my own problems. The other symptom is lack of empathy and caring. We do not see any kind of love and affection, any kind of empathetic attitude and caring attitude among the people who are suffering with this kind of a personality disorder. Manipulative and exploitative behavior. So, this is another symptom which is predominant among the people with personality disorders. I just want to take the advantage of others and then try to see that I am at the winning edge, I am at the beneficial edge. Unhappiness, suffering from depression and other mood and anxiety disorders. Always you see them with some kind of a gloominess, not, uh, not happy with the things that are going, not happy with the way they are dealing with the life and either suffer from the feelings of low key that is always being into the negative feelings, depressed and sometimes even you see them suffering with any kind of a mood or anxiety disorders. Vulnerability to other mental disorders. You see comorbidity among this personality disorders that is though a person is having one specific type of a personality disorder along with it they may exhibit different other patterns of abnormality which may eventually lead to some other kind of abnormal disease or abnormal disorder. Distorted or superficial understanding of self and others perceptions that results in being unable to see how unacceptable and disagreeable is their behavior. So, highly distorted, highly manipulative in understanding themselves and also in understanding others. Naturally, people are not ready to accept them which may again affect their ego or which may affect their personality. Self-destructive behavior. People with these personality disorders are always at a risk of involving themselves in self-destructive behavior. That is either they try to harm themselves or at least they threaten that they would engage in some kind of a destructive behavior like attempting suicide also trying to harm themselves using certain kinds of instruments. So, this danger of self-destructive behavior is always present among the people with severe personality disorders. Then they are socially maladaptive, changing the rules of the game or otherwise influencing the external world to conform to their own needs. So, this manipulative behavior not only in getting the things done, but even in the normal social interactions. So, this highly affects the way they interact with the people, the way they try to understand others. Naturally, because of these symptoms, people tend to avoid them. When they avoid, that reflects their ego problem and also try to distance themselves from the others. Naturally, it is once again a vicious circle. What could be the reason why people with different kinds of the personality disorders behave in this way. Is there any reason? So, if you look back at the causes of personality disorders, the research indicates that events occurring in early childhood exert a powerful influence upon the behavior in later life. 
For example, like if you go back to the Freud psychoanalytic theory, naturally the first five years of childhood play an important role in establishing their enduring personality. So whatever has happened during these five years, during the psychosexual stages, they try to attribute some of the personality disorders to this concept of fixation. And other researchers indicate that people are genetically predisposed to personality disorders. So this is also proved during certain research studies that chromosomal abnormalities and other genetic problems may lead to these kind of the personality disorders. For example, the cause of paranoid personality disorder is unknown, but it appears to be more common in families with psychotic disorders like schizophrenia and delusional disorder which is suggesting a genetic base in the development of this abnormal personality disorder. However, in some cases environmental factors may also cause a person who is already genetically vulnerable to develop a personality disorder. We can say the reason for the personality disorder is a combination of all the factors. It could be a social factors or it could be a psychological factors like traumatic experiences or it could be biological factors and an interplay of all these factors may lead to the development of the personality disorder. Is there a treatment for this? Can we resolve this problem of personality disorder completely? So coming to the treatment, we can say like the treatment of personality disorders may include individual, group or a family psychotherapy. Apart from this, medications prescribed by a patient's physician may also be helpful in relieving some of the symptoms of personality disorders including problems with anxiety and perceptions. So generally like as a psychologist, we focus more on the psychotherapies. Only when it is necessary, we, tr we try to recommend for the referral for the psychiatrist where they also provide the medical treatment. So as a psychologist, if we have to understand the concept of psychotherapy, the psychotherapy for patients with personality disorders focuses on helping them see the unconscious conflicts that are contributing or causing their symptoms. Suppose if a therapist is following psychoanalytic therapy, naturally Freud says whatever is there in the unconscious mind that may be influencing their present behavior. So while using this psychotherapy, we try to identify what are their unconscious motives, desires or unfulfilled wishes which are blocking their present life and once we make them get an insight into this, probably it would be easy for us to resolve this kind of the uh, conflicts. Then psychotherapy also helps people become more flexible and it aims at reducing behavior patterns that interfere with day to day living. Apart from the psychotherapy, psychoanalytic therapy, we can also use behavior and cognitive therapies which focus on resolving or reducing the symptoms or traits that are characteristic of this disorder. For example, if these people are feeling the difficulty in making decisions or inability to initiate relationships, we try to teach them, we try to mould them by focusing their thoughts, their feelings and their behaviours and there comes the uh, efficiency of the behaviour and cognitive therapy. Apart from the normal psychotherapies, are there any kind of the uh, alternative therapies that are present? So if you look back in the research, they say apart from the psychotherapies, we can also use some alternative therapies like neurolinguistic programming, colouring therapy and also in certain cases the dream therapy. So here colouring therapy is highly proved to be beneficial when we use this along with the other psychotherapies. During this particular session, people are asked 
to think about different thoughts to to listen to their own thoughts which are going in their mind so that they can become aware of their thoughts feelings and opinions and in which color they are seeing is it like black and white or is it in color and based upon the color they try to indicate the intensity of their moods the intensity of their thoughts and then they try to give them the feedback similarly in the neuro linguistic programming what they do is they try to examine the way a person thinks and acts through language and using this knowledge to affect the change what sort of a language is used how the brain is trying to influence this person is is it always they are using a positive talk or is it a negative talk and what situations they are talking so they give a kind of a performer where they have to observe their own thoughts and once we give them the feedback based upon their thoughts naturally it will help them to modify themselves as to what sort of a talk has to be engaged in similarly creative art therapies in this creative art therapy either they use dance movements or drama therapy or music therapy or involving them in a poetry so these kind of the therapies help them to promote health communication and also expression when they are involved in any of these creative art therapies they are encouraged to use their physical emotional cognitive and also their social functioning while enhancing self awareness and also facilitating the change so these are in brief which we call them as alternative therapies now to summarize whatever we have been discussing we can say personality disorders or a group of patterns group of symptoms group of traits which distort their behavior which affect others behavior and which affects the total interpersonal relationships there are three clusters cluster a cluster b cluster c and for each cluster we have again different types which uh, show different patterns or different traits and different symptoms and once we identify these symptoms we should also understand what are the causes of these different personality disorders and based upon the particular cause we can see which treatment can be used to them which kind of a therapy can be used to them generally we use a combination of all these therapies that is psychotherapy then cognitive or behavior therapy and sometimes even an alternative therapy